Welcome back to Africa Science Focus, the weekly science and development show from SciDevNet. I'm Ogeche Kanyo. Agriculture plays a crucial role in sustaining life and livelihoods across the African continent. It serves as a vital source of both sustenance and income. Despite its significance, numerous regions in Africa face the challenge of water scarcity, wherein the demand for water surpasses its available supply. In 2021, over 2 billion people faced water crises around the world. This is a challenge exacerbated by climate change and population growth. By 2022, 1.7 billion people relied on water source contaminated with feces. In 2022, the World Health Organization reported that 411 million Africans lacked basic drinking water. These stark figures, compounded by the effects of climate change, highlight ongoing struggles to provide essential water services in Africa. Effective water management is key to mitigating the negative consequences of water scarcity in agriculture. So how and why should water be managed sustainably to benefit agriculture? And what is the link between water quality and crop quality and yield? To find out, our reporter Michael Kaluki spoke to Dr. Masapelo Siopala, a lecturer in the Chemical Sciences Department in the University of Johannesburg, South Africa. If there are a lot of environmental contaminants, it means that there's a large uptake with the crops themselves, which means they can either overstimulate the plants or they can actually make them deteriorate in terms of the quality, but also the yield at the end of the day for the communities that are around there. Our current research is looking at uh, the use of pesticides and how they also affect crop quality. So it could either be good in that the crop will grow faster, they will be more resilient, but it will be bad in that it could affect human health, but also aquatic systems. So I think we do need to look at the fact that water quality, whether we're using it for agriculture or whether we're using it for domestic purposes or in industry, at the end of the day, if it's not fit for purpose and if it's not good for humans, then I think that we really need to have a hard look at it, what it is that we're doing. Water is a universal thing. It sustains life across all spectrums. So if we have a look at how contaminants go from, let's say, after you've sprayed your pesticide and then there's some spray drift or wind or rain, what does that imply? It implies whatever you're doing or whatever you're applying is going to directly sorb into the soil. And the soil, as we all know, is the, the place where plants uh, get their nutrients. So if you don't have good soil quality, it means that your crop is not going to grow. The water holding capacity is also going to decrease, but the plant uptake with all of the nutrients is also going to vary. And that also has a direct impact on exactly what type of crop you get at the end of the day, whether they do have the macro and micronutrients that you're looking for, and whether or not they are actually going to serve as a good food source at the end of the day. So what I think that most people are looking at is making sure that the crop quality that you get in the end is the best, but you need to also be accountable for all of the factors that are going to contribute to that at the end of the day. Dr. Siopela discusses the responsibility of local populations or authorities for maintaining and managing water quality for sustainable agriculture in Africa. It is a collaborative effort. I don't think that it's a fair thing for us to say that the authorities are responsible or this community should be responsible. Everybody should be responsible because water streams are interconnected. And if they are interconnected, it means that if I'm if I'm contaminating water where I live, somebody 50 kilometers away is going to have to take on my irresponsibility. And at what point do we toe the line? It's if you go outside and throw rubbish on the street, whose responsibility is it to clean it up? So I think that morally, we all need to be responsible for the environment that we're living in, but also for the impacts that we cause to those environments. One of the critical things that um, our research group is actually focusing on are ecosystem services but also the social impact component, 
Because I think that sometimes as researchers, we also neglect the fact that the population in the communities or in the water bodies that we're trying to do research in might not necessarily be well versed in what the water quality issues are in what the agricultural landscape looks like. So why I want to speak about ecosystem services is if one uh, thing in a chain is not there, it means that there is not going to be a consistent supply of one of the services that all of us are requiring. So what I'm saying here is if you've got water that is deteriorating, it means that the life inside of the water is not going to survive, which might have a direct impact on the community and the area. But holistically speaking, it's the responsibility of everyone to ensure that the environment is clean and safe and well managed. Because I think also we cannot rely on people that are far removed from issues that are currently being faced by an immediate community. So we need to make sure that we put in all of the necessary resources to better educate the communities around the area on how to make sure that they clean water. So for example, some of my colleagues are working on potable uh, water management in terms of cleaning it out or removing certain contaminants. What has to be done is to take those buckets to the communities and teach them how to make sure that the water that they are consuming is clean. One of my master's students is currently working on taking something that we'd all throw away like grey water and uh, making a membrane to clean the grey water so that the water can be reused for potable, uh, uh, potable purposes in the end but more especially for irrigation of crops because we can see that there are good nutrients inside of um, the cleaned water, if, if, if you will, afterwards. Now, Martha Pelo, you mentioned grey water there. Could you briefly explain what grey water is? All right, so grey water would be water that you get after you wash the dishes or wash clothes or even after you've taken a bath. So that water that we usually throw away, that is classified as grey water. Professor Sylvester Pandeli, the Executive Manager for Water Utilization in Agriculture at the Water Research Commission South Africa, talks to Michael about the challenges of water management and suggests measures to address them. The challenges that we are facing um, on the continent is the fact that uh, some sectors, uh, they overutilize our water resources. For example, here in South Africa, the agriculture sector utilizes 62% of our water resources. But Water Research Commission has decided to develop various technologies that are being used by um, various commodity groups like apple, table grapes, avocado, and so on, to reduce water consumption. And I think we are on the right um, track considering the fact that our annual um, rainfall distribution um, falls below the global I mean, uh, average annual, rain, annual rainfall. So we have got the responsibility to make sure that we use our water resources in a very, very um, um, sustainable and, um, and, and, and in a professional manner. Water on the African continent, it's a, it's a, it's a strategic um, resource, and we have got the responsibility to make sure that we use our water resources in a very efficient and effective manner so that we produce enough food by uh, using less water. We need to make sure that, I mean, we use water for generating, I mean, energy. We also need to um, um, use uh, um, water for other key strategic sectors. So we have got the responsibility to make sure that we use our water resources for various purposes in a sustainable manner. To discuss the future supply of water for agriculture, Dr. Siopella returns and tells us of the importance of research in optimizing water management, particularly in tailoring water usage to specific areas. I think the most important thing that's happening across the board is to have a more vigorous research base. And then I'm also glad that we do have the Sustainable Development Goals which tell us that there are certain aspects that need to be in check and in line for us to have a sustainable future going forward. So I think 
that in that aspect, we are taking good strides towards that. There are many researchers also working on uh, pilot plants to clean water. They're working on materials to remove contaminants. So I think that those things, they're still in the infancy stage. And infancy, because we're not actually really seeing great implementation, but I do feel that we need to first cross the hurdle of seeing what we can do in terms of the research and how far we can develop the materials we need to clean water. But also at the same time, there are creative ways of these things um, happening, which is one of the aspects would be the grey water part, recyclability, reusability of the water's resources that we've already got. So I think in that, there is a lot of work that is currently being done and a lot of interest from uh, agriculture um, industry uh, me members, actually. I would actually mention uh, when I was still doing my master's, the people that alerted authorities that there was something wrong with the water were the farmers. So I think that because certain things happen in that light, it does actually assist us to push forward and make sure that all of our um, environmental goals are reached and are reached properly as well at the end of the day. But the um, imperative is on all of us to make sure that this happens properly. And it starts with the little things. Don't throw paper on the street because that means you're creating an environmental issue that might end up somewhere else and that might start now affecting um, our food resources. And we all know how important agriculture is, especially in the African context. So we need to be more creative, find more sustainable ways of doing things, look into alternative ways that we can do agricultural management as well. Because I think it doesn't only go towards are we having the right crop yields and quantities, but also what are the crop uh, protection mechanisms that we're using and how do those impact the crops themselves, but also at the end of the day, how do they impact the environment? Dr. Thabile Ndlovo, a senior lecturer in the chemistry department at the University of Swaziland in South Africa, reinforces the importance of research. So it is very important that we do, we understand the water that we have. And uh, when we do that, we will know how to use it and how to purify it, or it will lead us to ways in which we can determine how to best use the water that we have. Uh, water is, is life. It is important for all of us, uh, and we require it for different purposes, agricultural purposes, for our own well-being. So it and it is also a, a, a basic need for everyone. So uh, the importance of um, of water research is 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 very important in the light in light of development industrialization, where we see a lot of uh, pollution coming from the development that we so much need. So we need to monitor. The, our water bodies more than ever. And uh, it's quite interesting that it becomes a cycle. You pollute the water, you use the water to grow agricultural products. It gets back to our our environment, the polluted, uh, the pollutants, uh, if I may put it like that. And uh, it keeps on going on and on. And we have seen over the years the the importance of uh, research as far as uh, some of the pollutants, some of them are very toxic. They can cause different effects in on living organisms, including humans. So water research is very important um, uh, for for agriculture, for sustainable agriculture. For one, we need to know the it, it's diverse as well. There's there's issues of water quantity. Do we have enough water to even uh, engage in proper agricultural practices? There's water quality uh, because plants, most of the pollutants that we can have, we can either have organic pollutants and plants are organic, so they would uh, easily take some of those. But we also have heavy metals, which also occur naturally in some cases, but 
the high concentrations are coming from our activities and this impacts or gets transferred into into crops or animals and eventually gets to the higher to the higher levels of the of the system whereby humans are at the top of the consumption chain. As a researcher, what challenges do you face in advocating for effective management of water in agriculture? Oh, that's a complex one. I don't know. Uh, I think uh, right now, um, for for most my that's my observation is that most the issue of climate change is 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 one of the key things, direct things that affect uh, water water and its use, whether it's agriculture or potable. So I feel like um, many, the main challenge is getting people to change behavior as far as water use and management is concerned. So that's one thing that we need to think about uh, because uh, I'll make an example. Uh, if people don't understand that during drought periods, you must uh, save water, uh, but be- just because they can see it running through their taps and then you find that people are watering grasses or washing cars and wasting water or not using it sustainably. That to me says we still need a lot to make people understand um, the importance of water uh, and why we need to to be cautious when we use it. So this is uh, cutting across agriculture and uh, when it comes to watering, uh, in the past you would just water and uh, without being specific to the crop. Right now we need to be able to to say whatever we put there, we are conserving enough for tomorrow so that our plants do not dry from drought because they were overwatered today, tomorrow they, are, they don't have uh, water uh, that is required. I think um, we still have some challenges. Maybe we also need a, a little bit of uh, uh, support from policymakers. They are doing their best, but there's always room for improvement. Also speaking to us about the importance of research in proper water management is Professor Mpandeling. The, the, the research that we are driving um, as an organization, we focus on the um, water uh, agriculture and sanitation sectors. The, the, the reality is that um, the research output that we are generating should be able to assist the community of practice and it should also be able to assist the policy makers and the implementers. That is why we have got the responsibility to make sure that we address the science policy interface or science policy gap. Because the research that we generate, we need to uh, finalize it and make sure that we identify key strategic partners for implementation or knowledge uptake. Talking about policy gap there, Professor, you know, how important is collaboration between both water researchers and governments on the continent in ensuring effective management of water in the field of agriculture? Look, the, 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 the collaboration and partnership is very, very important. We are a knowledge generation organization. Um, we need to work with the government departments. Firstly, as a, as, as a research organization, we need to align our research agenda with national programs or um, African agenda Make it by making sure that, I mean, we look at the priorities, the needs, and also the gaps that are there, I mean, across sectors. After that, it's then that we consulted them before we start coming up with anything to say, do you want us to address issues related to climate change impact or food security and so on? So that at the end of the day, we are guaranteed that the research that we're going to generate or the outputs that we're going to generate will be used, the outcomes will be used to address policy interface or policy gaps. And over and above that, we don't want to just generate research or knowledge and put it in our shelves. We have got the responsibility to make sure that we address the socio-economic issues on the ground. And that is why we align our activities with national development programs. We've got the responsibility to align our activities with SADC Secretariat I mean, um, agenda. We've got the responsibility to align our program with the African 
a union agenda vision 2063 and also the sustainable development goals at a global level how important is collaboration with countries outside the continent in regards to assuring effective management of water in the field of money in, in the field of agriculture sorry it it is very important because remember some of the regions across the globe they've got they've developed various technologies that can address water challenges across the globe. So therefore, we have got the responsibility to look at those, I mean, um, technologies and also case studies so that we can bring them, I mean, to the African continent. And if these technologies need to be adapted in order to suit our local situation, we we'll, would we'll have to do that. I will give you an example about the uh, waiting front detector uh, technology that was developed uh, in Australia. But it's being used here in the SADC uh, country, so on Southern Africa. And that technology assisting smallholder farmers to save water, to save energy, to save nutrients, and also increase the, the, the productivity. So we've got the responsibility to make sure that we drive our activities in a nexus or in an integrated way by making sure that we partner with various organizations across the globe. As rainwater becomes less reliable due to the effects of climate change, alternatives must be found. These include the use of things like groundwater, something Professor Pandeli spoke to us about. Groundwater um, it's, 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 it's one of, all, of the water energy mixes that, I mean, that we are driving as, as an organization, not only in the country or in the SADC region, but also at a global level. The reason why we are doing that is based on the fact that we are not getting um, above normal rainfall. Therefore, we have got the responsibility to look at the various options. It's like looking at, um, I mean, at the energy mix. When we look at the solar and I mean, renewable stuff and so on. So that you shouldn't rely only on a single source of, of water. Otherwise, we're going to have problems. And remember, it's not only the agriculture sector that utilizes water. There are various key economic sector that needs the same water that, that I mean, um, 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 we are talking about. So we've got the responsibility to make sure that we allocate this water in a sustainable manner, but also making sure that we look at the various options so that at the end of the day, if we are not getting enough rainfall, we'll look at the um, uh, groundwater. And the groundwater will assist us to derive economic activities so that by the time when we get above normal rainfall, will be able to recharge our aquifer system. So Africa has got various options. And what we need to do, we also need to look at the various interbasins so that, I mean, countries can share um, water resources with those countries that are not getting above normal rainfall. Dr. Andlovo discusses water management strategies, including irrigation for agriculture in Africa. It's, it's, it's still widely practiced. Um, the question would probably be, is it sustainable? Uh, so I think as a continent or as a, a communities and countries, we need to look at the way, because the truth is that sometimes we cannot run away from some form of irrigation. There are crops that can um, grow in, in the well, from rain fed, uh, um, using follow, following rain fed agriculture, but uh, some sometimes that is not really practical because you see this as soon as there's no water, then you can see the plants dying and that will affect uh, food uh, availability. So we need to be cautious about um, how we water, how we water, or how we manage water for agricultural use. I think the new water technologies right now that are available is the use of drip irrigation, which uh, is target specific to say that we have to use the minimum amount of water that is required uh, for that particular plant, uh, if I may put it like that. So, yeah, we we need to sit down and look. I know that when the drip irrigation was first introduced, it was a, an expensive technology. But we also need to look at indigenous knowledge. How how can we improve this? How can we, and innovative uh, ways 
Uh, we also need to be innovative. How can we make maximum use of the available water without compromising uh, the yields and the food uh, production for our countries? How important is collaboration between countries on the continent in regards to managing water for use in agriculture? For example, the Mbuluzi River is important for both Iswatini and Mozambique, who use it for agricultural purposes. Is there any inter-country collaboration between the two countries? That's that's a very important uh, question. And yes, uh, water just like a uh, is not uh, does not belong. You cannot confine it to one country. And what one country does, which is on the upstream of a water source, affects what happens downstream. And we are all humans and we are all trying to benefit um, um, sustainably from all the resources that we have. So it is important that countries do collaborate as far as the water use is concerned. Agriculture is very key because it is one of the biggest uh, users of water. So if um, I, I think even in my country, then we the most most of the water that is abstracted from rivers is used for agricultural purposes. So yes, uh, we do have um, uh, uh, cross country agreements which touch on uh, South Africa and Ma Mozambique, and some I think uh, there's one which uh, touches uh, since we've mentioned Mozambique the Mbuluza, the Mbuluza water agreement is one of the agreements uh, that touch on the Mbuluzi River between Eswatini and uh, uh, Mozambique. But there's also other agreements like the Inkomati Maputo Agreement, which is between the three countries, South Africa, Mozambique and Eswatini. And this looks at the quality and quantity of water that is sent, um, that, that crosses the different countries because uh, people in Mozambique should also receive uh, good water coming up from South Africa, Eswatini, and, and going down that road. So it is very important to ensure that um, inter-country collaborations are maintained and they are monitored because uh, you don't want to be affecting one country over the other. So I think there are existing uh, collaborations and they are solid between the countries and each each time there's always um, uh, intentions to ensure that um, um, water in coming from South Africa to Eswatini is enough and has got the right quality and when it passes through and gets to Maputo, Maputo also or Mozambique also gets enough water that has also the, the right quality. Uh, irregardless of the activities happening along the the the, the water bodies, so there are agreements uh, that are in place between. I've mentioned just a few. And that's all from our South Africa Science Focus today. If you want to find out more, head to the SciDev Net website. That's www.scidev.net. Today's show was produced by Alice Hurst, with editing by Ogechi Kianyao and Titila Pefadere. Reporting was done by Michael Kaluki. I'm Ogechi Kianyaro. Until next time, it's goodbye. Africa Science Focus is produced by SideofNet and distributed in association with your local radio station. This podcast was supported by the Science Granting Council's initiative, which aims to strengthen the institutional capacities of 18 public science funding agencies in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm.